In today's video, we're going to look at some of the main signs that you might have an avoidant attachment style. Now, your attachment style has a huge impact on how you are in relationships, the things that you find easy and the things that you find difficult. So by understanding your personal attachment style, you're going to have the best chance to create a really good, solid relationship that's going to make you really happy. So let's dive in. First thing we're going to talk about is just a little bit, very briefly, about what attachment styles are. Your attachment style is a reflection of how you interact with others, what you expect from others, and how you try to get what you need in life. It comes from when we're very small children. When we're babies, infants, really young, anything up to kind of five or six, there's almost nothing that we can really do for ourselves. If there's something we need in life, we need the adults around us to provide that for us. And that goes for physical needs and emotional needs. Now, someone who has all of their needs met by their caregivers, so whether that's their mother, their father, whoever's looking after them, if all of their needs are met when they need them met, that's great you will probably have a secure attachment style. And even if your needs aren't met absolutely perfectly, the majority of people are able to get the majority of their needs met. So they have what's known as a good enough parenting and they develop an, a secure attachment style. Some of us don't have all of our needs met for whatever reason. It doesn't need to be that your parents were bad parents, but there was something going on or they were given bad advice or whatever it is. But as a very young baby, you learned that you weren't able to get all of your needs met by somebody else. And there are various ways that you would learn to cope with that. And one of those is an insecure attachment style known as avoidant attachment. This is where you learned that other people weren't gonna meet your needs, so you'd better do it for you and you learn to try and meet all of your own needs. Now, there are various reasons that that's not a great idea in a relationship. It builds barriers between you and other people. So in other videos, we're gonna look at what you can do about having an avoidant attachment style and how your avoidant attachment style will impact your relationship. But for now, let's just try and find out whether you actually have one or not. The first sign that you might have an avoidant attachment style is that one of the first words you'd use to describe yourself is very independent. There's nothing wrong with being independent. Being independent is a good thing. It's a good quality. But someone with an avoidant attachment style takes that beyond where it's helpful and into a place where it starts to become occasionally self-destructive, or just it's more than what's needed. So being very independent is actually going to influence almost all of the signs of being avoidantly attached that we're going to go into. So you'll see throughout the video how almost everything comes back to being very independent in at least some degree. The next sign that you might be avoidantly attached is that you very often feel suffocated or crowded by other people. So this might make it sound as though having an avoidant attachment style means that you're just an introvert and that's really all that's going on. That isn't the case. It's perfectly possible to be an avoidantly attached extrovert or to be an avoidantly attached introvert. It's not related. That's partly because what we're talking about when we talk about someone with an avoidant attachment style feeling crowded or suffocated, we really mean that they are feeling emotionally pressured by other people. So it's not that you feel that there are too many people physically around you, it's that their emotions are weighing on you. That means that you're possibly able to spend quite a long amount of time with other people, provided that you're not trying to engage with them emotionally the whole way through. Another sign that you may have an avoidant attachment style is that you really don't like talking about what we think of as difficult emotions. Now, when we think about it logically, that no emotion is a difficult emotion or a bad emotion, but some emotions like joy and happiness, it's easy to talk about 
because we know that our feelings and our thoughts on that topic and just generally the topic itself is going to be welcome in the conversation. Difficult emotions like being angry with someone or feeling disappointed in them, that's a much harder conversation. Now, no one likes having those conversations. Very few of us really enjoy telling someone else that we're disappointed in them or that we're angry with them. But someone with an avoidant attachment style might know that they really should have that conversation, but decides that, do you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'm not going to have this conversation. It would just be difficult. And instead, I'll deal with it by myself. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I, I'm i grumpy about this. I'll deal with it. And so rather than talking about something difficult in a way that builds the relationship and helps to build trust and lets you feel closer to each other, someone with an avoidant attachment style is going to pull back take their emotions on themselves, not share them, and not be having those difficult conversations. So rather than sharing the emotion that you're feeling and talking about it, you just deal with it all alone. This links a little bit with the next sign that we're going to talk about that you might have an avoidant attachment style, and that's that you find it difficult to trust other people. Now, lots of us with avoidant attachment styles will feel a little bit attacked by that. So we might say that, well, I do trust people. I trust this person and I trust this person. And you'll have a very clear, very short list of people that you trust. And again, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you having this attachment style. It's just that it may cause difficulties and present challenges that you're going to have to overcome in the longer term in your relationships. So we use saying, oh, I do trust this person as a way of avoiding talking about the fact that we take a very long time to trust people and we don't necessarily trust people as far as other people would. Someone with an avoidant attachment style will also usually want to deal with the overwhelming majority of their problems by themselves. So again, you can see how this links in with being very independent. You see a problem and you immediately step in to solve it for yourself. And generally, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be able to solve your problems. It's a good thing to take responsibility for your own situations and not just assume that everyone else is going to fix things for you. Having said that, sometimes it's really helpful to have someone else there with you. It's normal to want other people to help you out with something difficult. Someone with an avoidant attachment style may well spend three hours solving a problem for themselves that somebody else could have solved for them in five minutes with no effort. And they're okay with that. And that's understandable, but you can also understand why it creates a barrier between you and the people around you. Because if you're not asking them for help, they struggle to ask you for help and they feel as though you're not letting them in and letting them see the real you. People who have an avoidant attachment style will also often find that they have a series of short-lived relationships. And many of these relationships will be about the same length. Now, everyone's length of relationship will be slightly different, but it's usually somewhere in the region of six months to two, two and a half years. And if you find that all of your relationships end at around about that point, even if you think that there are good reasons for them ending in each individual case, that kind of a pattern suggests that there may be something going on with you whereby you feel the other person starting to get a little bit closer than you'd realized, and so you start to pull away. Someone who has an avoidant attachment style will also often dislike public displays of affection. Now, again, that's perfectly normal. Some people like public displays of affection, other people dislike public displays of affection. You're allowed to have your own personal preferences. I think one of the differences is that for someone who has an avoidant attachment style, often public displays of affection feel a little bit like you're being claimed. So when someone kisses you in public or holds your hand, it doesn't feel like a connection between the two of you. 
it feels like you're being claimed or someone is stating that you're theirs rather than it being a natural organic thing. You may also not look for praise or reassurance very often. Most people will want reassurance. They will want other people to tell them that they're doing really well, that they appreciate them and all of those kind of things. Whereas someone who has an avoidant attachment style probably won't seek that out. That's one of the things that can make them really quite appealing as an employee is that you don't ask for much from your managers and you're not asking other people to really support you on an emotional level. You might also be a social butterfly. So I've already mentioned that having an avoidant attachment style doesn't say anything about whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. And a lot of people who have an avoidant attachment style actually find that they're sociable with a huge group of people. They can get on with absolutely anyone at a party because that's a surface level of interaction. They're able to have that conversation, make small talk and feel safe because they're not really letting anyone else in on a deep emotional level. If that sounds like you, you may well have an avoidant attachment style, but don't worry. Having an avoidant attachment style isn't bad. It doesn't mean you're broken. It's just a different way of dealing with the world. And importantly, there are loads of things that you can do to try to develop a more secure attachment style and to really improve the quality of your relationships. Now we're gonna go into those in loads more detail in another video, but at least now you've hopefully got a good idea of whether you have an avoidant attachment style or not. So I hope you found that video useful. Did it fit with what you expected? Do you agree with the signs I've listed? Or do you think I've missed some? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. And as always, please do like and subscribe for loads more thoughts, advice, and videos all about how to improve your relationships in the long term. I'll speak to you soon.